What I'm trying to do here simply for you guys is to teach you guys how to avoid going to the computer first. That's, that's really what we're doing. From a big picture standpoint, uh, I'm trying to save you from wasting time following uh, the step one of a flowchart that wants you to disconnect the computer and measure resistance. I don't want to do that test. And in small ways, we can modify this thought process and apply it to all kind of circuits on the car. So it's pretty cool. Um, something I discovered along the way, and this is why we baseline tested our ohmmeter and diode scales, is you can use your, we're already doing voltage measurements, right? We had five, zero, and zero, and um, I know which one my signal wire is now, and I just have my uh, multimeter, like I was already connected to ground, but I'm showing you that I'm touching the metal housing of the alternator with the ground lead and then my red lead that was on the signal wire on the voltage scale when we read zero, all I did is I moved my switch to the diode scale. And, and what did the scan tool show when, it, when I did that? We were at zero volts. I mean, this is pretty cool. We were at zero volts on the scan tool, unplugged the sensor. We measured five, zero, and zero, right? That's what we had. And we, we're still not sure which one the ground was maybe at this point, but when I touch that wire, when I flip it to the diode scale, knowing the diode meter puts out voltage, what am I seeing on my signal wire, on the scan tool? I'm seeing 1.29 volts, that's 1.29 volts. It went from zero to 1.29. How is your signal circuit integrity if you do that test? It's good, that's the voltage output. If you remember, that's pretty close to the voltage output of what that diode meter does. Same test this is important all i did was reverse the polarity i have my red lead going to ground black lead going to the signal no change with reverse polarity so i what brought this up is i had a, um, a youtube comment a while ago where the guy's like oh i have a better way to do that i just use my own meter and i uh, and i thought oh that's good i i've i've done that in the past and i never really thought about teaching that in a classroom environment so i wanted to um use this, this opportunity to show that there are variables if you're gonna teach that. Um, remember the ohm meter also puts out voltage and um, this is me now using the ohm meter and I'm, remember how I flipped through the scales and we read from like 0.22 to 0.45 on the red meter. And so I'm doing that. We can see the um, down here at the bottom, this is zero and then I, somewhere in there is like uh, you know, your 0.22 and then there's your 0.44 max. But to use my ohm meter to check circuit integrity, notice I have to have my red lead on ground and my black lead on the signal, but on the diode scale, you don't have to. So for whatever reason, the meter um, reverses polarity on the diode scale compared to the ohm meter scale. And I know that, you know, when you're checking a diode, it is a one-way check valve. and I guess that makes sense, but it's something to remember. If you're going to use your own meter to inject voltage into a circuit, what do you have to do? You can't do it with your black lead to ground like we're nor normally used to doing. It has to be red lead to ground if you're using the ohm meter. That's what I'm showing you here. So look, here's black lead to ground. Same thing, I'm trying to use my ohm scale and I'm moving through the ranges and I get no signal voltage change at all. Um, as I'm doing that, scan tool stays fixed at zero volts the whole time. And by the way, if you wanted an internal impedance reading of the uh, voltmeter that I told you about, it's a high ohm scale, uh, because I'm really measuring that right now, that's on the M ohm scale. So that's 488,000 ohms is the number of that internal voltmeter inside the computer. Just a side note. So using the ohm meter to inject voltage, using the diode scale to inject voltage, I like the diode scale. Think about it. We started this job five, zero, and zero. We don't know which one the signal is. I know one of those two zeros is my signal. Just go like this with your meter. Click, click, diode scale. Same connections. Black lead to a known good ground. Red lead goes to your wires individually. That's where we already were. And then what? I touch this wire, nothing happens. I touch this wire, I'm reading. Sorry, this is our focus. 1.96 volts, zero volts. As soon as I touched it, it jumped up. How's the integrity of my wiring? Yeah, I don't need to. And so this would be on a circuit without bias voltage. You with me? We can use a test light. 
We can use our diode scale. We can use the ohmmeter, but you've got to remember to flip your polarities. Oh, and then I'm showing the same thing on the ohm scale, or this is the diode scale uh, with reverse polarity, and then the ohm scale works. I know this is a black lead, but this is connected to the red, right? Um, but on the ohm scale, this is me flipping through the ranges. And if you remember, when we baseline test the, tested these, the yellow meter put out more voltage on the ohm meter than the red lead did, and that's where this applies. So I was just doing those baseline tests. Can I check circuit integrity with my ohm meter? But I'm, you guys understand I'm not using the ohm meter to measure resistance. I'm using my ohm meter to inject voltage into the circuit. And we can use our bodies like Joe had mentioned too. You can do that. I have a picture of that somewhere in here. Oh, there it is. Using my body as a variable resistor. So um, uh, we have already identified the signal. Uh, this was five, zero, zero. We said this was the ground wire. This is my signal wire. I know that's my signal. Um, I'm showing you the scan tool up top. I'm showing you the voltage on the meter. And then I'm taking my pinky and I'm touching the BAT post of the alternator. And then I'm touching the signal wire uh, on the sensor. And I realize I'm, I'm putting more voltage in there that should be, but my body's a real high ohm resistor. And these input circuits uh, don't support or carry any type of current flow anyway. Um, you're not going to hurt it. That's what I'm doing. I'm using my body. You can see I'm putting in 6.8 volts. What's the scan tool show me? 4.98. Why wouldn't the scan tool show me the 6.8 that I'm putting in? Exactly. It's not what it's designed for. This circuit is a zero to five volt circuit. When they wrote the program in for how it reports, there's no reason for it to show anymore. Here's an example for you. Um, and, and one that you guys can search on the premium if you want to see the case study. Just type in Lincoln Navigator and search any Lincoln Navigator I have on there. And I have one that the O2 signal wire was shorted to the uh, O2 heater wire. So it had 12 volts going into a one volt circuit. What did the scan tool show me all the time? 1.6 volts. So it was like 1665 millivolts it was fixed at. And that's higher than what an O2 would ever read, but same kind of thing. What we're talking about, circuit was never designed to read anything more really than a volt on an O2 sensor. So the maximum I saw was 1600 millivolts, ended up being a, a, a power feed for the heater shorted to the signal. And once that was fixed, how was the signal circuit when, when I was done, it was fine. And, and the reason behind that, you have to remember that our input circuits are real high ohm circuits. They don't carry any kind of current flow and you almost can't hurt them. Uh, outputs are different. We can hurt outputs. Inputs, I'm putting six, seven volts into that circuit. I'm perfectly comfortable with that. But is that a quick and dirty way that you can check circuit integrity? Yeah, this is scan data. This is the scanner that we're looking at here. Is that voltage making it up into that signal wire and up inside the car and output to your scanner? Yes, it is. Circuit low, circuit high codes. In case you didn't have a data parameter. Was I making the circuit high by jumping voltage in there? Sure was. Was I making the circuit low by unplugging it? I sure was.